All righty, welcome to the Young Lawyer Podcast. Um, who should we want to start at the beginning? How did you get into you law? Well, I I started studying law. Um, that was like my second my second degree, I guess, in a way. Um, I started with journalism, and then one of my friends um, who was doing law sort of invited me to sit in one of his lectures. I just loved it. So the next semester after that, I sort of switched. <laughs> Which was a bit of a bit of a change. I mean, like the uh, the Venn the Venn diagram of jobs that have journalism and law is pretty. Like the circles are separated on that one. But you know, I had to go with it because it just yeah, it was something that really interested me. I didn't I didn't think about it before before that lecture actually. That's so interesting because did you finish your journalism degree or did you change over mid through midway through? Sorry. I did what a lot of journalism students did and transferred pretty much after my first year. <laughs> That's right. I'm in the same boat. I did um, exercise science straight out of school. Just thinking, oh, I'm, mm. I enjoy fitness. I enjoy sports. I'll go do that. Nah, was that? That was definitely not for me. <laughs> yeah. Not a, not a big fan. But a week into it. Yeah. A week into stretching people out, you're a bit worried that, <laughs> oh, what if, I, what if I have to go to court? I should research this. No, I was more so the... Um, chemistry and physics i just couldn't be bothered to do maths constantly and you know have to do biology as well and just remember so much things i was like nah this is not for me and being 18 no, no, all i wanted enough. to do was kind of drink and party and <laughs> go out and enjoy myself <laughs> to be fair <laughs> yeah no, that makes sense yeah well i was living on the gold coast at the time too so i was like oh from a little town to moving to the city was you know a big change as well yeah, I haven't heard of many people that go to the Gold Coast and want to start studying that. <laughs> I don't hear that. 100% agree to that. Um, yeah. <laughs> what was it about the law that attracted you so much to it? Uh, it was about problem solving. That's the biggest thing that I just absolutely love about law is they give you a problem and you know there's an answer. So then it's really up to you to try and find out how. Because it's a lot of the especially with journalism and everything, it was more about here's an issue, report on the issue, and then we end it. You know, and I didn't really like that, that, um, that closure as, you know, the American Hollywood people go on about. So I actually really liked law that it was, you know, solve this issue. It's up to you. Yeah, um, I'm in that and same sort boat of again. get to translate that. Mm. Yeah, because that's the same thing. The barrister asked me the other day for the ceremony. He's like, oh, you know, why are you even doing law? Like, what is it about law that you like? And I just said, you know, problem solving. Being able to help people with their problems. Yeah, and that's it. And you'll find that a lot with most lawyers is that's sort of where it stems. And that's why a lot of people stay as lawyers is that you actually get to help people and you sort of see how you can help people. Mm -hmm. So before you went to this lecture of your mates, did you have any inkling that you even enjoyed law? You didn't do it in high school or anything? Just went to this lecture and gone, you know what, this is, this is it for me. Yeah, not at all. Eh? Um, I did music and French and modern history at high school. Um, none of those <laughs> dealt with the, uh, any of the, uh, the legislative requirements. But I, yeah, no, I had no inkling until that lecture. But then, yeah, as I said, once I did, I was sold. That's, that's really interesting. Um, so what did you do once you started doing your uni degree? Did you go straight into work or did you just continue with your journalism work or how did you progress I, from there? I had a couple of different jobs throughout uni. Um, I worked full time for the entire time, um, but sort of in trying to give myself as broad of an experience as possible, I worked um, uh, for a Sparky. And a refrigeration company working in their office, um, helping with tenders and proposals and everything like that. I, I worked for the government for a bit. I hosted my own radio show for about eight years. And yet in no time did I work for a law firm. <laughs> it wasn't until I graduated that I sort of actually started looking for that. When you had to do your PLT program work experience or did you do the full year internship or? Yeah, so, um, so I did PLT at at QT so with that internal sort of program where you just work in a quasi sort of law office I'm not sure if it's being offered now obviously okay. um, but it was a couple of years ago and how did you find that transition from going doing all these other experiences going to a law firm or doing with the uni or whatever it is there's always certain things I'm sure you may have experienced this with yours there's always certain skills that you can take 
from certain jobs and bring into a, like a current workplace. So it's a bit different with law and law is a bit different than my other jobs in the sense that, you know, time recording is very, very rarely in any other job where you actually have to write down what you did for every minute of the day, especially every six minutes of the day. But um, there is definitely certain things that sort of bring to it. Um, the biggest difference was that I had to wear a tie every day and that was the QUT one. That was a big change for me. I had to buy ties. Yeah, about going from um, doing casual on your radio to having to, you know, be professional looking, I guess. <laughs> yes, that was, it was a very heartbreaking thing where I had to buy my first, my first hair gel, you know, everyone remembers that. <laughs> um, so from doing your PLT experience, did you find it difficult jumping into a job or because you had so much variance experience, you found it quite easy or... One, one of, so I, so I did the internal one, right? So what, what the, the, um, the benefit of that is, is you work very closely with about 30 to 40 other law students or PLT students, and you can sort of bond with them and find out what they're doing and what they're looking at. Um, so speaking from that knowledge base alone, I was one of the few that was hired from my PLT. So the place that I did my, um, my internship with, you know, subsequently gave me a job. Uh, they, and that was good. They were um, a generalist firm in the suburbs of Brisbane. And yeah, they sort of gave me a lot of skills and experience um, that I sort of, yeah, wouldn't have gotten at, I think, at any other sort of law firm that was specialised in one area. Yeah. Well, that's always good. But that's, so yeah, that said though, I think I started looking for jobs um, about day one into my BLT and it wasn't until the end, the last day of it that I said had been offered position. Yeah. So how did you, I guess, deal with that constant persistence of applying for jobs or not hearing anything? Or... Yeah. So that's the hard thing. And I, if I'm being honest, it's gotten harder, especially with COVID and everything like that. You do hear about a lot of top tier firms that are deferring placements for graduates this year. Um, what I had to do is I kind of have to just accept the possibility of rejection. And I think that that's probably the easiest way of moving forward with that, you know? So I probably applied for, I don't know, upwards of a hundred or so internships, um, junior lawyers, um, lawyers that didn't have like any position that I felt, thought you know would be an inroad for me, I applied for, and yeah, that was that was really the only thing, is I just assumed you know there's going to be 300 applicants for this job, perhaps they'll look at my resume, perhaps they won't, but you just have to do it, you know. I think that's the only way. Yeah. Unless, unless your parent owns a law firm or, you know, something like that, or you've got a mate that owns a law firm, I think that's, you really just got to apply for everywhere. Yeah, networks really come in handy at this point in time. <laughs> yes, yeah, I think so. But yeah, I can probably agree with that because I've been applying for jobs since about January down in Brisbane and Sunny Coast. And just as I was, you know, nearing the finishment of my PLT, you know, COVID hit and then everything just went quiet. And then, yeah, so I'm just... Plodding along, really. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, especially especially now, it's just, yeah, it's it's a tough market out there. And it's a tough market for junior lawyers, if I'm being honest. I mean, I'm very lucky in my position and at my firm, which is McCarthy Jury Lawyers, just a <laughs> nice little name drop there for you. But um, and they've provided me with a good environment. Um, but I've, I've heard, you know, bad stories from some of my other friends, especially this time. Mm. Um, so just quickly jump up. How did you find the transition from being a student to turning to actual solicitor and being responsible for the clients and everything else that goes on? I think the hardest part, and this is going to seem quite trivial, but it actually is quite hard. And a lot of people my age, a lot of millennials find it the hardest part. But the hardest part is actually continually talking to people and especially talking to people on the phone. Like it sounds so trivial, but it's really hard to sort of get into that mindset, you know, and being responsible to someone and knowing that you're going to have to talk to that person later if you've, you know, mucked up or if you've made a mistake. I think that that's, yeah, that's definitely a hard thing. And I don't really know if 
you can get used to it more as it's just something that you have to do. You know, it's just a slog that you have to go through. So yeah, yeah just keeping your clients updated it. with what's going and whatnot. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, that's, I think that's one of the things I've been trying to practice, I guess, with this podcast as well as my speaking is just, I guess, messaging people, um, trying to connect with people and just putting myself out there to actually you know, keep doing it, keep doing it and getting more people on here and getting to chat and all that sort of thing. No, well, that's a good way. That is definitely a good way for, um, for you to, ex- to increase your network. I don't know if everyone should start a podcast. I think you've definitely got this market covered now. But yeah, no, this is def- for you, I reckon it's definitely a good way of networking, finding people, especially you know, if you're looking for work. Yeah, and I guess one of the things too with the podcast is I want to show people how, I guess, collegial the law society really is because, you know, I've got people who are obviously you know, heads of firms, principals of firms or, you know, all around Queensland so far. And I think I just interviewed someone from Sydney the other day and it's yeah. just, you know, everyone's willing to put their hand up and offer time to help people. And I guess that's one thing I really want to emphasize as well. Yeah, that definitely exists. Yeah, there's a lot of people and... That and it's so true that like in Australia, we're so small. Like you will run into someone the next week that you're on the other side of, and you know of of a case, and they'll be you know doing something completely different. And they'll help you out. You know, like it really is. It's a very collegial thing, but it's also you really don't want to make any enemies or burn bridges. I think that's probably another another way of looking at that coin. You know, um, yeah, definitely. Ronnie. Um, I guess what's one thing that's really influenced you throughout your journey as a lawyer? Um, one of the biggest things, and it's advice that a lot of people have given me. So the current person that I'm working under, um, Andrew Taylor has, has given me a lot of advice. And one of the things that he's definitely given me advice about is that you should be open to learning and you've got to have that love of learning. You know, law is very hard, it's very difficult, and it's constantly changing. And, you know, it happens. I've got friends that have done it as um, junior lawyers, you sort of say, you know what, I've done my study. I'm not going to read another book. You know, I'm not going to read another article. And it's just, man, like, every three months, something that you use every day will be completely different or will be different enough that if you don't know it's different enough, you'll be in trouble. And I think that's probably definitely the biggest thing. And yeah, I completely agree with that because yeah, that's the one thing I've always learned as I've gotten older is that there's always new things to learn. And especially coming into the 21st century, you know, there's the social media, all that side of things that I've also got to be, I guess, considered as well, especially for firms and stuff. Because you see a lot of, I guess, rural ones not you know, using or utilizing social media as much as you know, your newer firms in Brisbane or sunshine coast and all that and obviously there's traffic that they're losing that way as well yeah you know you've got to find new ways of appealing to different markets you've got to look at different ways of getting clients i mean some of those some of those firms you know will have a completely dedicated technology sector you know or technology you know part or arm of their firm it's just yeah it's definitely where the law industry is heading i think yeah, it's just definitely always changing. Um, speaking of changing... Well, I mean, you can order a pizza online. You can't... You have to be order, able to order a lawyer online. Yeah, I've definitely seen a lot more um, just online firms. I think I've seen like at least two or three online firms that you, know, you just message them or whatever and they reply to you in their time and set up a video conference or something. I thought, yeah, that's definitely the benefit. And you see uh, that in Brisbane where there's a lot of like virtual offices where people will hire offices. And it'll only be, you know, they'll only go there when they have a meeting with a client and the rest of the time they're just working from home. Yeah, I think that's definitely been more prominent now too since um, COVID's hit. And, you know, maybe even the possibility of, you know, continually moving forward, having on off, you know, at work some days, at home some days, just to mix it up. And um, who knows what Mm. the future will hold, I guess. Um, So how did you go from a generalist law firm to your current um, field of expertise? Right. So my current field of expertise is corporate and uh, corporate advisory and intellectual property, which is a very, yeah, they're very, it's a very much more niche than just general generalist. Um, And that was, 
really just a, a change of firm. <laughs> I, when I was at my journalist firm, um, so they do, they, they do specialise a bit in family law. That's, that tends to be one of the places that there is that they excel. And I sort of just got given all the property contracts or the commercial contracts, everything that sort of didn't fit in that, you know, keyhole of family law. And that was sort of what I started loving, you know. I, and it, it was only because of that love of learning, if we bring it right back to the, the core concepts, um, it was only because I said, yeah, please give me everything. And that was sort of where I really enjoyed, you know, I enjoyed reading a contract and then seeing, oh, you know, the client's going to get screwed because they're trying to, you know, do something under the table. This is what you need to fix. And that was that sort of, yeah, I sort of, once I had that skill and I sort of knew the area that I was going to go into or wanted to go into, I started looking for firms that could help me in that area. But it was a little bit different um, starting out. Like starting out, I would have just, I would have gone anywhere that would have. Would just have wanted me. the experience and I guess. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's my situation, I guess, really. I'm applying for, you know, everything except maybe a conveyancer because I don't think I can go back to conveyancing again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely, you've got to have a love for conveyancing to be a conveyancer. Alrighty. And just one final thing uh, before we go. Uh, sorry. Where is it? Um, what would your advice be to someone wanting to start out a legal career or um, start as a lawyer or just even a paralegal? I think there's different levels. Yeah. So if you want to start out as a lawyer and let's assume you've gone through the 25,000 years of study and everything, you know, we'll just fast forward all of that and all the heartbreak and neuroses and mental anxiety, all of that's done and all those boxes are ticked. I think the biggest thing is that you need to find someone that is going to give you and is willing to give you your time. And you need to find a mentor. You need to be able to find someone that really, you know, can help you grow as a lawyer because that's, that's what they don't really, it's not advertised as much, but for a junior lawyer, I think one of the biggest um, obstacles to overcome is your lack of experience. And I think people don't talk about that enough. You know, there's other jobs, you know, there's, uh, we've got, you know, a junior office person here, they can handle X, Y, Z. Whereas as a junior lawyer, you kind of need to be looking and comparing yourself to people that, you know, are more experienced than you. And that's, you've got to get your head around that as well. Like you got to get your head around. Yeah. You know, I will get there eventually, but I need to continually want to learn and develop myself. I can't just wait to move up the ranks. That's, yeah, that's so interesting. Um, on the topic of a mentor, how do you go about, I guess, finding one or looking for someone? Is it just in the firm you work for or it can be anyone outside of it? Or what's Fine. You need to find someone that's smiling. <laughs> that's, that's, find someone that you know, has a level of happiness so that you can sort of see, well, you know, if they're doing something um, and they clearly know how they're doing it and how well they're doing it, maybe there's something I can learn from them. You know? And I think with mentors as well, different people are good at teaching different things. You know, it's not like, it's not like one person is the dictionary on how to live their lives, but you know, we, we work in an industry that is full of specialist people, you know? So you find someone that knows how to do something and then, yeah, that's the person that you go to. And the smile is obviously because, you know, maybe they're happy doing it as well. Or... <laughs> you, yes. Or just they're happy friendly. doing it. All the, all they're the most friendly, all they're the most willing to help you. I mean, sometimes that's what you have to settle for. <laughs> all righty. Well, thank you very much for coming on the podcast today. Really appreciate um, having a chat with you and, you know, learning a bit about you and the advice you provided. Yeah, no, I'm always happy, always happy for a chat. <laughs>